Well, good morning, everyone. Great to see you all again. And you join me in this fantastic wildflower meadow. Today, I am going to review my Atlas Athlete uh, camera bag. Um, I've had this about four or five months. Um, I wasn't going to re do a review just as soon as I got it and did it out of the box. I didn't really see the point of doing that, but I've now had it five or six months. Uh, I've really given it a proper beasting in that time in some pretty appalling weather. And I thought I would review it and let you know what I really like about it. Um, anything that's given me any concern and perhaps whether it's a bag that uh, you might want to consider if you're looking to upgrade your camera bag. First up, um, please note I bought this bag with my own money. Uh, I've had no help whatsoever from uh, or sponsorship from uh, from Atlas Backpacks. Um, however, I will say right away from the off that when I was looking, because I can't buy this bag in the UK, you have to import it from the US, I was pretty concerned whether it was going to be the bag for me. And Alan at um, Atlas Backpacks was really helpful. I sent him numerous emails, spoke to him about whether my kit would fit, etc. And actually, they were so helpful. That certainly was one uh, part of my decision to go with them. They certainly gave me confidence that they were going to be helpful if there were any issues or maybe had to send it back. Okay, who is this bag for? Um, it's primarily aimed at photographers who travel and hike and climb to more remote places. There's no doubt about that. The conundrum has always been how do you combine uh, the best bits of a quality hiking rucksack um, with a dedicated camera bag? Uh, I also think that it's ideal for those who know what they'll be photographing uh, in the future. Because given it's quite an expensive bag, you don't want to find that your kit suddenly expands massively and you find this has been a mistake. So I think if you're pretty established in what you do, what genre you like, if you're landscape or wildlife, whatever, you may find this bag is perfect for you or not. Isn't that typical? <laughs> it's been brilliant sunshine all morning and now as I'm doing this, it's actually starting to spit with rain. Never mind, we will battle on. Um, equally important, I think um, what a lot of reviews maybe don't mention is who isn't this bag for? Uh, realistically, and you want to be honest with yourself here, if you never walk more than maybe 500 yards from your car, then it might not, it might be an element of overkill. Uh, but despite it being really, really comfortable, uh, do you need the technical specs of a hiking bag when really for about half the money you could get a dedicated camera bag that holds all your stuff and not much more? Um, However, for me, even if I wasn't walking long distances, which I do and I tend to hike up hills a lot, and especially with my landscape photography, um, I, the comfort factor is really, really important. Uh, and if it makes your day that little bit more pleasant, uh, it definitely ends up showing in your, in your images, I think. And there's nothing worse than feeling you want to pack up early because you're just knackered because you've been carrying a, a heavy bag for, for miles and miles. Um, so comfort's really important, but as I say, um, maybe not for everybody given the cost and the technical specifications, maybe a bit of, a, a bit of an overkill. Now, as I mentioned, there were, there were certain key criteria for me and things that I insisted on in my next camera bag. Uh, and there were three, four, four main things, I should say. Um, first one was airline compatibility. I've had quite a few issues before and ended up carrying about four lenses and a camera body once in my, in my jacket, um, simply because even though I knew my bag was within airline sizes, um, an obstreperous official decided that no, my bag had to go in the, car, the hold. And when you've got like, you know, 10 or 12,000 pounds worth of kit in a bag, you do not want it bouncing around in the hold. So airline compatibility for me was really, really important. And I had to make sure that um, it looked small enough and was small enough to go in wherever I wanted to. This certainly fits that criteria. Number two was simply comfort for really long treks. I do regularly, you know, 10, 12, 14 mile hikes when I'm doing my photography and often the photography is secondary to me doing a long distance walk. Um, and so comfort was absolutely critical and I wanted the same level of comfort as I could get out of my Osprey rucksack if that was possible and I must admit I didn't really think it was initially. Um, thirdly was flexibility uh, with regards my loads in my, on my camera bag, um, how much camera space um, but also I wanted proper protection for my camera. I didn't want to be going down the route like I used to of course with you know wrapping my camera in a towel so um, flexibility of use is really key um, and the other thing it had to be weatherproof and really really tough. Um, 
there's no point having a camera bag if it's going to fall apart after a while and certainly this is there are bags i've picked up that feel maybe slightly tougher but certainly this is this feels to me as strong as my osprey rucksack it's made from very similar materials and that has been really abused and say after five or six months i'm not concerned with here about the weatherproofness uh, or the toughness so there's those four criteria is why uh, actually essential for me for my next camera bag so how does it work? If you've seen reviews of uh, the Atlas before, you'll know how it works. You've basically got an integrated camera support system or protection system, uh, which is in here, brilliantly done. And they're well known for having this, uh, the flexibility issue comes in with their origami pocket. This pocket comes up and you can, if you don't need the space, that gives you much more space accessible um, from in here. And, uh, but if you me, for me, I knew I was always going to be using it because I've got a DSLR kit, not a small kit. Um, I knew that I was always going to be using, using this. And so that takes, in fact, my, my 70 to 200 normally. So this is your camera compartment, easily accessible. I like the fact that it's, it's not the bit that's on, you know, this back, it's really important. The bit that's on your back isn't going in the mud, which is the case with my low pro big bag and quite a few others. Um, I've never had all of my bags have done that actually, but this is much more practical as it's primarily a carrying bag and it's going to be carried a long time and you don't want your aeration bit to get uh, really filthy. Um, the other part of the bag, of course, is this highly expandable um, section, which effectively is a rucksack. You know, that's all it is. It's, it's a well-designed, clever rucksack, lots of straps. The Atlas Athlete, this is a 40 litre pack. 10 litres is the camera compartment and this bigger area is 30 litres. Check the maths, brilliant. Um, but again, it's very, very flexible and what I like about it is the fact it also goes very, very flat. You see it's got a very low profile which brings us back to the airline compatibility, etc, uh, etc. Et um, so that is how it works, very simple. Two systems, camera compartment, 10 litres, 30 litres of other. Okay, look at that beautiful sunshine now. What a gorgeous day. Anyway, uh, what are the key positive features of this bag? Uh, I'm going to rattle through them. There are a lot. I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can. Um, the website's got lots of more details about height and size and weight and things, so go there if you want to look at some of the technical stuff. But for me, these are the key points. Firstly, um, the frame size comes in two sizes, so if you're five foot eight or over, I'm six three, so I wanted the bigger frame. If you're under that, they do a smaller frame for people who are under five foot eight. Um, the waist belt comes in three sizes, so both of those combine uh, to make a really good bespoke fit. That's really important. That's again something they've taken from the and the idea from the rucksack manufacturers who really go to town on different sizes of frame and waist belt. Um, third point really is you can remove the A-frame. The frame that's in here is just a metal tube that gives it that rigidity. You can see the outline of it there like that. Um, if you want to, you can make the bag even more low profile. You can take that out and either put it in your suitcase if you're traveling. And then this bag would pretty much go up under the seat in front of you on a lot of airlines. So it really does. If you're worried about that airline compatibility I mentioned, that's really quite another little uh, feature. Um, uh, fourth point really I would say is um, loads and loads of pockets. It's brilliant. They've really thought a long time about where the pockets are, how big they are and what they're useful for. And there are pockets everywhere. I won't bore you with the details, but the ones that I found really incredibly useful are, there's one up here which has got um, a tether with a hook for your car keys. So you know when you're up in the hills, the last thing you want to do is lose your keys. So that's really helpful. Another really good one I found is inside the lid. They, because it's the safest place, there's a waterproof pocket here that's great for passports or money. Uh, again, they've really thought about it. Um, the, the, and the key pockets, for instance, like the two that you find you use most, the one on the top of the lid is really, really voluminous. It's huge. Uh, that would take a complete set of waterproofs, a jacket and trousers I found I managed to get in there, which is really what you want. Another big expanding pocket on the outside. I'll come on to that because I actually put my water bottle in, my water bladder in there, but I'll come on to it. But again, that's really huge. It stretches and it's got a pocket on the outside. Um, really clever. And the top of it doesn't let water in because the top normally comes over the top of it. Um, really good. So lots of pockets. Talking of water storage, the bag has, um, it's always a mute point. Do you want a water bladder or do you want um, water bottles? Um, this takes a two litre water bladder um, I've got a three litre one which I use in my rucksack, which is too big for that. But anyway, for me, I'd, I'd much rather have my water bladder in the front here because a three litres of water 
weighs about three kilos. I'd like it centralized and I just run my mouth tube up around the top of the bag and it works really, really well. So, um, and it doesn't come with it, so you're not paying for it. Um, and if you don't want that, you've got um, pockets on the side to take your water bottles. There's two here, which could be tripod pockets as well. Um, but, you can use, but talking of pockets, really useful one. Uh, in the waistband, um, you've got on both sides, you've got this little pocket comes out of this zipped container and these are really good size. It will take a full size water bottle. Um, it will take obviously your phone or food or a map or whatever you want to do. And there's one on either side. Really, really good idea. And they're, they're sufficiently far back that when you walk, you don't whack them. If they were further forward, they'd be a, they're in, with bottles in, they'd be a nuisance to get in the way. So they, the, the fine detail of, of um, attention is really, really good. Um, that's on your pocket. So there's a laptop sleeve if you care about that inside. What I like about it and it is the fact it's in the safest and most secure part of the rucksack. It's padded and it's right in there. It's not on the outside like some of them, so it can't A, be stolen or be damaged very easily. As I say, really good location for the laptop sleeve. And just like good rucksacks, it really, really tightens down. Lots of tensioning straps, etc., etc., that uh, that will tighten it down really tight to stop things moving about if you're doing a long walk. There's nothing worse than having things rattling around on your back when you're walking long distance. That's again, that's something from the rucksack manufacturers they've got. It's totally washable. This can go in the washing machine um, after six months of heavy use. You can see the back, my back. This one's due a bit of a wash. The old sweat coming through on the aeration back. But again, this works really well. I've never been aware of really being. Um, overheating etc. Um, this aeration pack is good and um, the waist belt also comes off and I've used this as a day pack just on trips to London, gone into London for the day you know for work or something and I take that waist belt off and I've got a really usable 30 litre rucksack. I'm not going to use the camera a bit but you've still got a really usable uh, day pack you can use for other uses apart from photography. Um, equally what I love about it, it doesn't really look like a camera bag. The problem with things like this, if you're walking somewhere and it's a slightly remote area, that can only really be a camera bag. It's very obvious. Um, to be fair, this doesn't. I really like that for obvious reasons. Uh, the zip pulls are really big. You can get, you know, they're really big and fat. They're nice, not unique to this bag, but um, it's, it's important to have them. Invariably, I'll be using gloves when I'm undoing these. It'd be cold, blowing a gale. There's nothing worse than fiddling with small zips. And the other thing I'd say is the after-sale service from Atlas was absolutely brilliant. In fact, it's my pre-sale service. In fact, um, I have contacted them about a couple of things I'm gonna mention later um, since I've had it. But when I was buying it, they were incredibly, incredibly helpful about my specification of kit. And I gave them my exact lenses, my camera box, Body and said show me how it fits and they did so I was really impressed with that and again that's that was one reason that gave me the confidence to buy a bag import it from the States without actually seeing it first um, one thing I've been asked uh, by quite a few people and I had questions about as well was can you use this bag for overnight hang hi hiking the, the bigger bag, the Atlas Adventure is 70 litres and it's brilliant for that. It's really designed for two, three day hikes. And if that's your thing, I definitely prefer um, the larger 70 litre adventure bag. Um, I've always found for hiking myself that jamming everything in really tight creates problems of its own. You can't get at stuff, you're straining the bag and all the fixtures and zips and fixtures and fittings and so forth. Um, and I'd rather have a very slightly heavier bag that's easily accessible and with room to spare than one that's say jammed really, really tight. So, however, what I did do, and I thought, well, I didn't really think about this, uh, whether this would work. So I've got some stuff in here. Um, so I put my hiking stuff in here and let's see if we can actually, what we can, what I've put in and what, uh, what can come out. Right. Um, doesn't look a lot, does it? Now, key thing, what I would say is this is a, um, this is a Hilleberg um, three-man tent. Uh, it's actually comfortable for two, but it's sold as a three-man tent. So this is a really, really big tent. So I'm being a bit unfair on the bag here. Similarly, this um, complete cooking outfit by Tranga um, is not what I have if I was traveling on my own. This is designed really for almost like, you know, three or four of you. This, can, this has got a, a kettle and a saucepan and a, and a frying pan. It's got all sorts of things built in and the gas container. Um, that's my my roll mat, you know, your bedding mat, um, walking sticks. What I would say, apart from those things, what isn't in there? No sleeping bag, but if it was me and I had to carry this stuff, my roll wrap would be attached on the outside on the carabiner. My sleeping bag would be inside for obvious reasons, keep it dry. Um, there is loads of room in the top for food, 
um, that where I'm, the, there's loads of room for water, um, so it would work. But so what I would say, this isn't the right gear for this bag. If you are a solo traveller and you're camping, you can easily get a jet boil, which is perfect for one person. If you've got a small tarp or a one-man tent, a sleeping bag, poles, um, and a roll mat for one person, they will easily go in here. So if you are thinking about it, definitely for solo campers, it's it's easily accessible. Um, what I would say if there's obviously two of you don't, you know, this isn't the one you want to get if you're doing, I think, two or three day hikes, because again, you, with your food and your water requirements, you're going to need more space. But for overnight trips, you know, going up to the top of the Lake District for, uh, for sunrise, if you've got the small equipment designed for one man, I'd say this will accommodate it perfectly well. And of course, you've still got all your camera stuff in there. I still had a spare pocket for a tripod, etc, etc. So, um, if I say so, that, that's my point. I would say yes, it would work, but bear in mind its limitations as a four litre pack. It really is, I think, one person going for one night, no problem. Two, three nights for one person, you might better just about do it with, with as long as you take small amounts of food and water. And but anything bigger than that, I would really recommend go for the Adventure 70 litre pack. Uh, okay, for the last bit of this video, I thought I'd come into the wildflower meadow. It's a bit more out of the wind and it looks like it's going to rain again. Can't, weather can't make its mind up. But um, I think the thing that most people might be most interested in, are there any negatives to this bag? Because I have been praising its positives. But yeah, I've had probably, there's three things that have caused me concern since I bought it. First one was actually before I got it and when I was buying it. My biggest worry was, was it deep enough? Um, is the bag actually deep enough and I, my biggest concern was as I'm a DSLR user I knew that for um, you know micro four thirds and and smaller format people like mirrorless I think it was a no-brainer um, but my worry was actually as you can see here my D810 here actually sits slightly proud of the camera bag um, and I knew that from the depth to be fair I've got it, it's a D810 which is a reasonable size camera body DSLR it's also got an L bracket on it but I thought well, it, that's what it's going to be fitted with so I'm not going to take that off however I will say that fear has been totally allayed two reasons when I spoke to them and in usage uh, I found I'm not going to worry about it now um, when you close the bag you've got loads of padding here um, so that protects you, doesn't it? it protects the top of the camera, etc. And the other gear that might be sitting up proud in the bag is quite well padded, particularly at the base where your back is, the bottom of your back. Equally, this zip here actually expands. There's a, there's a the proper expansion in that zip fitting there, so that gives and takes depending on the size of your kit. So I think um, my D810 fits perfectly well, um, and I'm really happy with that. And I so say that isn't really a problem for me. And if you want to put your lenses upright, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's an issue if they're big enough, but that's going to be the same in every camera bag. Uh, and I think they've got the balance about right. And I certainly don't have any concerns with it. Um, any actual faults? Well, I'll be honest, I've only had one glitch with the whole bag while I've been using it. And that was with the rain cover. Um, the rain cover's stored in here. Really good rain cover, works really well. Um, it's not too tight, some of them can be too tight, and this one just fits perfectly, so they've thought about that. But what happened with mine was when I was in Glencoe, and it was appalling weather, blowing a hoolie. It was about, uh, I'll put the link into the video of me in Glencoe, and you'll see just how bad the weather was. I pulled the rain cover about the third or fourth time I've used it, and I didn't pull it hard, and the stitching on this orange tether here just came undone. It, I didn't, it didn't rip. It didn't break off inside the bag, which would be more worrying. It just the stitching gave way. I've tied it in a knot. Um, I've spoken to Atlas and they said, they, I sent them some pictures, they were really concerned. They said, we haven't had it happen before, we'll have a look at the stitching. They offered to repair and I said, it's fine, you know, I've just tied it in a knot and it works perfectly well. And that, I can honestly say, is the only glitch I've had with the bag. So, you know, they are talking about, you know, they said, I'll have a look at the design, etc. Um, but that is the only fault. And the rain cover works perfectly well, so I'm just glad I didn't lose it. If it had blown off, that would have been an issue in a very soggy Scotland. Um, and the third point of my concerns, really, that will concern people is the price. Um, this has to be imported from Arizona. Um, I'm sure at some point they seem to be doing really, really well, so they will have some distributors in the UK. But in sterling, this bag cost me £300. I had to pay £23 postage and I had to pay tax on it when it came into the UK. I had to pay value added tax. So that was £300 plus £23 plus £60. So I had to pay £383 this bag. Now that's a lot when you can see a lot of camera bags advertised for £150 to £250. 
Um, personally, I think it's really worth it. And the main, main competition for this, when I was in Scotland um, in February, I was in Torridon, and I was chatting with Simon Baxter, who's a great photographer, and I'll put a link into his channel. And he had the Shimoda 40L, which is a direct competitor. Now that bag initially looks cheaper, but you have to buy the ICU starter kit as a bare minimum. The starter kit with the camera basically comes up to 340, 350 quid as well. So it is competitive with its peer group, um, but it is really, really well made. Um, I will use this not just as a camera bag, I'm gonna use this as like an everyday rucksack for walking and things like that as well, even when I don't have a camera in it. So I think it doubles up as usage. Um, and I can, I thought about it, it seemed a lot, but actually now in hindsight, I think I could easily justify it. And this, in theory, has got a lifetime warranty, should last me a lifetime. And for me, again, those three concerns have all been allayed and um, I'm really, really, really pleased with the bag. So we got there in the end. Uh, conclusions. Um, thanks for sticking with me this far. What do I think about the bag in conclusion? Um, I've had it, as I say, for five or six months. I really wanted to test it for at least five or six months, and more importantly, in really, really bad conditions. It's not much a review if I just take it out of the box and say, look, it's a nice looking bag, and I paid 360 bloody quid for it. So um, point one, I would say if you're using mirrorless and smaller format, it's a no brainer. It's totally flexible. The athlete pack at 40 liters with the, the big enough camera section is, is a no brainer. It really, really works really, really well. Um, for DSLR units, my concerns I had initially, I say about the depth, have been allayed. And obviously things like lenses are bigger. You have to consider what lenses you've got. But you say, but you can see from my lens, I've got a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, a 70 to 200 mil, 2.8, um, and, a, and a full frame uh, D810 in there and they fit perfectly. So if that's your sort of kit, which is what my landscape kit is, that's great. And even if you have an extra lens, if you're just like I cause I'm sometimes take my macro lens, I just put it in its case and put it in the main rucksack bit and it's perfectly fine. So you've got flexibility and that's where my filters go, everything like that. Um, so for my landscape and travel uh, layout, this is perfect. Um, it's strong, it's flexible. Um, as I say, the camera section I really like now and the design of the pockets and the straps of the bag as a rucksack is really, really, really top notch. They've really thought about the detail. Um, point three I'd say is um, I'd struggle to use this for my wildlife simply because I've got big lenses like a 500mm f4. Um, but, and I think got things like a, a gimbal head on another tripod and that's got to go somewhere that would probably carry that. So a bigger bag, especially when it comes to travel, is I'm pretty much committed, I need, it. I need but in an ideal world I'd have this and I'd have the adventure pack as well. Um, but if you are doing wildlife and you're using things like crop frame cameras and you're using a 100 to 400 mil zoom, a 300 mil f4 or a 400 mil f5.6, um, those will fit in really well. And I think actually it's a really good complement for that because probably doing wildlife, you'll be, you'll be walking a bit as well. Um, so if you're using the smaller lenses for wildlife, it works equally well. It's only really when you get to the big primes that it causes a problem. Um, the other thing I'd say is um, on my trips this year, as a conclusion, this bag has been frozen. It's been in like minus 10. It's been in horrendous wind and rain. It's been dropped on bogs, dropped on rocks. It's been on sandy beaches and I've had to clean it. Um, I really have abused it, um, not deliberately, but that's just what happens to my camera bags. You know, they're, they're there to protect my gear and it has to work. And, and I've used it, anyone who knows the west of Scotland in winter, the northwest of Scotland, winds, rain, sand, rocks, etc., and bogs. Um, it was a really good test and it didn't even blink, so it's fine. So yeah, final thoughts, I would say, um, yes, it's expensive. But think of it a bit like tripods. We all tend to make mistakes early on in our, in our photography. We buy cheap ones, which I think is right if you don't know what you're gonna be doing in five, 10 years time with your photography. So fine, this may not be the bag for a beginner. I don't think it is, because wait until you see what kit you've got. But if you know what type of photography you're gonna be doing, then buying one bag that should last you pretty much forever, um, that will cost, and a cost that will be spread over, you know, maybe 10, 15 years or longer, suddenly this looks like a really good investment. And um, I'm really pleased with it. I would whole, wholeheartedly endorse it for people thinking about using it for the things I use it for. And uh, let's say I've had absolutely no contact with Atlas about this. They don't know I'm doing the video and they're not supporting me in any way whatsoever. And believe me, if I thought it was crap, I'd say it was crap. Um, but it isn't, it's actually really good and easily the best bag. And for me, for my purposes, it works incredibly well. So thanks ever so much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Please leave some comments underneath. I'll try and answer them if I possibly can. And uh, I will see you all again very soon. So be nice to each other, enjoy your photography and uh, see you soon. <music>